Hi, I'm Lou Manfredini, ACES Home Expert, and in this video, I'm gonna show you the basics of framing a basement. Commonly, basements have a concrete floor with either poured concrete or cinder block walls with wood floor joists at the ceiling. Now, before you start to finish a basement, you wanna make sure that water isn't seeping in. If you have water issues with your basement, contact a professional about basement waterproofing before starting this project. Now to get started, set up a laser line in the middle of the room to establish a level line. Using a straight edge, trace the laser line with a pencil. Do this all the way around the room. Next, measure the floor to the line and from the ceiling to the line. Do this in each corner at the center of each wall. Now there'll likely be some small variance between your numbers as you go along. This particular basement was very square and pretty even. Since this is a basement, water is always a concern. To minimize the damage from a possible future leak, the frame will be mounted on top of treated 2x4s. The 2x4s will be cut into 12-inch sections, then using a hammer drill or impact driver, drill two pilot holes in the board. Then using a masonry bit, drill the corresponding pilot holes into the floor. Using masonry screws to attach the boards to the floor. Leave gaps in between the boards so that if there is ever water, it can flow through, minimizing any damage to your frame or the drywall. Now, on to building the frame. Our handyman starts by nailing two studs together. These will be the top and bottom plates of the framed wall. And starting at the end, we're gonna measure 16 inches and mark an X on each board. This X marks the center of the stud. By having these two nailed together, it ensures that the marks will line up when he goes to nail the frame together. After marking the X, he measures backwards from that three quarters of an inch and draws the line. This line will mark the edge of the stud. Once they're marked, you split the two boards apart. Using the level line marks, he adds the top and bottom numbers together to get the height of the frame. Measure the width of the top and the bottom of the studs, then subtract that from the height of the wall to give you the length of the vertical studs. I know they're called two by fours, but the actual width of the stud is one and a half inches. Remember, we added the base studs to the floor so that the total amount to subtract would be about four and a half inches. Measure out your studs and cut them to size either using a miter saw or circular saw. Lay out all of the studs along the marks you made and then use a nail gun or hammer to nail each stud into place. To minimize the potential for water damage, attach a poly sheeting barrier to the back of the frame using a staple gun. This will keep water away from your drywall. Once you have your frame built, it's time to put it into place. With the help of another person, lift that frame onto the base and push it up to the ceiling. If there is a gap between the joist and the frame, use a shim to fill that gap in. Use a level to make sure that the framing is plumbed to the wall and then use that nail gun or hammer and nail to frame the joist and the baseboards in place. When the joist is running parallel to the frame, add a stud to the ceiling so that you have something to nail the frame to. To frame around obstacles such as windows, leave a gap in a large frame the size of the window and then build a smaller frame to fit into that space. Use the same conventions you use to make the larger frame. Studs 16 inches apart on center. Once we'll fit the frame inside the larger frame and nail it into place. Continue to use these principles to finish your framing project. Remember, when building these frames, they're heavy, so it's best to work with another person to put these into place. And once you have the frame in place, you can have a licensed electrician install your electrical. And once all the electrical is finished, it's time to insulate. And that video is coming up next.